Last year around this time, if you had gone to your local petrol pump in Delhi, you would have paid about 72 odd rupees for petrol, per litre of petrol. And if you are in Mumbai, where petrol has always been more expensive, you would have paid about 77 and a half odd rupees around this time, the middle of February. Right now, petrol prices, as you know, in Delhi is just a shade below uh, in 90 rupees and in Mumbai it's almost 96 rupees a litre. So prices have gone up between 23 to 24 percent in the space of one year. Now normally you would be told that this is because crude prices have gone up. Crude oil from which petrol is made, those prices have gone up in this one year. So obviously you'll have to pay more but this is not true. The only reason you and I are paying more right now is because government taxes have gone up. Both central and state government taxes have gone up in the past one year and that is why we are paying more at a time. We should actually be, have been paying less because our earnings have gone down. Many people have lost their jobs, many people have taken pay cuts. So ideally they, we should have got a little bit of a relief on petrol prices but no, we are paying more in the middle of a recession. Why is that happening? Keep watching the show to understand. How is petrol made? Crude oil, which can't be used directly, is picked, uh, taken out of the Earth's surface and then it is transported to refineries where it is refined and converted into different kinds of um, fuel. So there's petrol, which is very efficient as we know, then there's diesel, then there are uh, things like aviation turbine fuel used in uh, jet planes, there is kerosene, there's liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, which comes out, uh, there is uh, um, Vaseline, a white petroleum jelly, which we use, uh, and it's also used in all kinds of cosmetics. There are various kinds of products which come out of petrol and many of these products are then taken and through chemical processes converted into other products. In fact, all the plastics that you see around you, right? Uh, all the bottles from which you drink, um, maybe your computer, uh, the computer frame, everything. Some way or the other, it's got something, some amount of crude in it. The car, not just uh, the petrol that's going into your car or the diesel that's going into your car, many times the rubber in the wheels is actually crude oil based. Some of it could be crude oil based. The paints on your wall, that also comes from crude. So when crude prices go up, all these things tend to become more expensive and obviously something like petrol, which is 100% coming out of crude, is going to get more expensive. But here's the interesting thing that is worth looking at. Prices of petrol and diesel that we're paying have gone up by 25, 23, 25, 28 percent, depending on which city you're in. But if you look at the price of crude that is being bought, comparing the same period, February to February now, it has actually gone down marginally by 0.3 percent, but it has still gone down. Now, uh, the reason I'm saying that is, and I'm not comparing some random crude that is not used in India. I am looking at crude that Indian refineries buy, which together is called the Indian basket of crude. And that basket of crude has actually more or less remained constant. In fact, as I said, it's gone down for about $54.80 uh, $54 to a barrel to $54.63 to a barrel. That's, that's the change we've seen. Very marginal change, but still there's been a change. Now, despite that, why are we paying more, right? We're paying more because of a simple reason that in the COVID period, the government, both the center and uh, various states have increased the tax that they charge us. The center has increased taxes by 13 rupees, right? It used to charge approximately 19 rupees to per litre of petrol, right? and it's an amazing amount of tax already, that has gone up to almost 33 rupees to a litre when, uh, when we take petrol. And that alone is 37% of the total cost of petrol at a pump in Delhi. 37% of the total cost of uh, petrol in a pump in Delhi is just central government tax. And in Delhi, VAT, which is uh, levied by the Delhi government, is about 20 
rupees 60 paise 20 and a half rupees or so and that is 23 percent so together these two account for 70 percent of what you and i pay at uh, our petrol pump in delhi 70 percent now again what is the government saying the government is saying look uh, there is no other way for us to raise money because things are selling you know gst has gone down people have uh, lost jobs, their income has gone down. We have given big uh, uh, rebates to p corporates. We've given, we've let them take uh, big rebates on corporate taxes. We've given concessions there, so corporate tax recoveries are down. The only place we have is petroleum products and therefore what can we do? And you'll see that excise duty in the last year has actually gone up. In the last year, as we saw in the budget, excise duty collections have gone up in a year when the economy has tanked. So you can understand how much of that is only because more money is being taken from the consumer on the petrol and diesel they're using. Now, uh, another thing that the government likes to say is that, well, you know, okay, maybe we are together charging about 60% of uh, uh, the total retail prices taxes, central and state taxes. But look at uh, the UK. In the UK, it is... 63 4 percent so what's the big deal you go to italy it is 65 percent there there are all these countries also charge a huge amount of tax on the petrol and diesel that people buy but again let me just compare in uk you pay about uh, i'm going to convert it into rupee today in uk around this time you're essentially paying about 123 rupees for a liter of petrol right if you use rupee you would have to pay 123 rupees in UK today. In Delhi, you're paying 89 rupees, okay? Now, uh, so obviously, UK um, is, people are paying more, but compare it to the per capita income. Compare it to the per capita income, and let's just take the 2020 IMF projections for per capita income. UK per capita income is more than $39,000 per year, and in India, per capita income is $1,877. That's the differential, right? Okay, uh, people say that that is, in dollar terms, that doesn't make sense because obviously things are cheaper here. With $39,000, uh, you'd be able to pay buy many more things than you would be able to buy in the UK. So let's take what is called purchasing power parity dollars, which means that how much can one dollar buy in the UK versus how much can one dollar buy in India, right? And let's look at that. And if we compare that, then per capita income using purchasing power parity terms in the UK is about $44,300. In India, it is $6,284. Now, if we compare that, just PPP terms, then an Indian... Uh, consumer is paying five times more five times more when we adjust for that for the petrol they're buying even though in UK petrol is more expensive almost 50% more expensive but when we compare to our average income we are paying five times more than the UK consumer is right and this is in purchasing power parity terms if I just use dollar actual dollar terms right then the UK Indian consumer is paying 15 times more in nominal terms, in actual dollar terms, 15 times more than the UK com consumer compared to their income. Again, let me explain it to you again. I'm not saying that they're paying more in real terms. I'm saying compared to their income because ultimately what you pay should be compared to your income, your ability to pay. So that is one key reason the government should have given a rebate in this year and not taken more in taxes on fuel. This is a year when people are already facing problems. Even those who are relatively affluent, they're facing problems. Their income has gone down. Uh, uh, many have lost jo their jobs. Their businesses aren't doing well. So this is a time when the government needed to give some kind of a relief to these people on certain costs like conveyance. Now, a lot of the cost is actually, look at diesel. Diesel prices have gone up as well pretty sharply in uh, uh, in the last one year, if I compare diesel prices, then they have gone up by 23% in Delhi and 28% in Mumbai. So, compare these two. Diesel is used not just by the rich, not just by the affluent. It is used for transporting goods. It's used by farmers. There had, should have been some kind of a rebate here. But this is only one part of the story because the second part of the story is 
petrol refineries are uh, actually get some kind of a protection. Their prices are more or less protected. I'll explain it to you briefly. You see, it doesn't matter what the cost is of producing petrol in India. It simply doesn't matter how much it costs. Whatever the cost would be to import petrol, that is more or less what refineries get. They get 80% of what they get, what they get as refinery gate price, right? Nowadays, since it's unregulated, is just what it would cost to import petrol. And by the way, it's just not the cost of importing petrol. It is the cost of buying petrol at a, uh, let's say, at a port in the Gulf, putting it on a ship, the cost of port charges, then transporting it in the ship, the petrol, insurance cost of uh, the ship, and then port handling charges, freight, everything is put together and a trade parity price is put together there. Mind you, not, none of this has happened. None of this has happened. The petrol has not been imported. It has not been, no uh, insurance has been paid. There's been no freight cost. Everything has been produced in India. Yet, there's this protection that refineries get, this refinery protection, which ensures that they will always get a margin, whatever the price of crude might be. The higher the price of crude, the more expensive it is abroad to produce petrol, the more their margin is. That is how they gain, because their cost of producing petrol is lower in India. So we are affected through this double whammy. One is this fixed or protected price that uh, petroleum refineries get. And the second is the high taxes that the government takes. That's the reason we pay so much for petrol.